Hello. Working remotely has become a fact of life over the last six months or so. And it's probably going to be a fact of life for the next six months or so. But even when things do get back to normal, it's possible that working patterns are going to have changed. It's just as easy to work with somebody who's on the other side of the planet as somebody who's five miles away. And even if that person is only five miles away, it's often easier and more convenient to work remotely rather than driving to their place, doing that short job and coming back again. Saving time, making things more convenient and also saving carbon emissions. However, working with applications such as Zoom and Cubase together can be tricky and getting it set up so that people can see and hear what you're doing in the same way they would if they were in the same room takes a bit of work. There are a million different ways we could slice this particular keg, including using software options to route audio, but that's not the route that I've been taking. And today, in this video, I'm going to show you my way of setting this up so you can use Zoom and Cubase seamlessly together. Depending on your existing hardware and what you've got lying around, you may need to buy an extra bit of hardware, but that's something you'll have to juggle for yourself. There's two setups which I'm going to look at, and then we'll look at how to route audio and how to set up Zoom so that you get the best performance. Firstly, on screen at the moment, you can see using two external audio interfaces. I've got my existing Cubase one, as I'd call it, which is part of my normal studio setup. And then I've got a second audio interface called my Zoom interface. And I've taken the output from my Cubase into Zoom. This is just two standard jack-to-jack -jack leads. If you don't have another external audio interface, but you do have a PC with built-in audio, you can use this kind of setup as seen on screen. We've got two quarter inch jacks going to an eighth inch stereo jack and plugged into the blue input jack on the built-in hardware. This can then be selected from within Zoom as your audio interface, and this will work in the same way pretty much as the other setup. Once you've got the audio hardware set up out of the way, there's a couple of other things that need doing. Firstly, routing your microphone to Zoom, and secondly, changing Zoom settings so that it doesn't alter the audio that you're sending to the Zoom call. Let's look at those next. The next area to look at is getting the audio from your microphone to Zoom. Now, if you're just using a webcam, then that will have a microphone built in and that will be the source that you're using. But now we are using the audio coming from our Zoom audio interface, whether that's onboard or an external one, you need to route audio from a microphone to it. How you do that will depend on your main studio interface. If you have one which has a mixer app built in, then you're gonna be able to set it up to send the audio from that input to the output. If you don't do that, then you'll be able to do it using Cubase. Either way, make sure you don't have a problem with feedback, okay? With this kind of situation, particularly if you're using a condenser mic and you've got your speakers up loud, then you can have feedback. And if you have loud feedback, that can permanently damage your hearing. So always be careful with this. Turn the volume down, which is a good idea anyway, or use headphones, because then you're much less likely to get feedback. With that out of the way, let's look at the two ways you can do it. So first of which is using the audio interface mixer program. In my case, I've got an M-Audio Profire 2626, which is pretty old, but it's still rock solid, reliable, and sounds great. And the app that comes with it is really useful for mixing. So let's take a look. So here you can see the M-Audio mixer app, and it's straightforward. I've got my Zoom sound card connected to the output that's fed by AUX1, and I've got these two sources. So here I've got my microphone, which is controlled by that. So here I'm altering how much will go to Zoom, and here is my stereo mix. So this is my output from my computer. So you can see we've got audio coming from both because I've got monitor turned on in Cubase, which is where we're gonna look at next. But if you've got this kind of app, you can set up a mix control absolutely perfectly. In some of them, you can save different mixes. It will need a bit of experimentation with you to get the balance right between the two, but with a bit of work, you'll be able to get it so you get a good balance between your voice volume and the music volume. 
your mileage can vary depending on the audio interface you've got, but quite a lot don't come with that kind of mixer. So you need a different way of getting the audio from your microphone to Zoom. To do that, you can use monitoring in Cubase, which is what we're going to look at now. So here you can see we're in Cubase. And if I turn the monitor on, on this mic channel, which I've got connected to my microphone, as I speak, you can see the signal level going and that will be fed to my Zoom sound card. So that's reasonably straightforward, but there's a couple of things you need to be aware of. Firstly, feedback. Secondly, you need to make sure that you turn the mic off whenever you're playing music, because otherwise you'll not only get the music coming directly out of Cubase, you'll also get the microphone picking that music up, which can have undesirable effects. At best, it's it's going to hear that room sound. Sometimes you'll get phasing, etc. So you want to turn it off. That can get a bit boring and it's easy to forget. However, there is an automated way to do this. Now, I appreciate it's possible to do a much more complicated setup using the control room part of Cubase, but we're not going to look at that because it's pretty easy to get lost in there and we want something that's simple and is going to work for us all the time. So, Back in Cubase, let's look at the setting that's going to make all the difference. So instead of manually turning this on and off, as you've seen here, we can use Cubase to do this by going to Edit and Preferences or the Cubase menu and Preferences on a Mac and then clicking on VST. Now on the VST part of the settings here, it's this setting Auto Monitoring at the bottom. That's what we're interested in. It by default will be on Manual, but if you change it to Tape Machine Style, and then click OK, you'll see what happens is monitor is now on whenever the transport is in stop. So most of the time, that will be when you want to talk. As soon as you press play, as you'll see here, monitor then gets turned off. This is ideal because it means that whenever we're playing music, the mic will be turned off. And as soon as we stop the music, the mic is turned back on. So that gives us a degree of automation and that's going to work reasonably well. You need to make sure you don't have more than one input selected because then you'll have multiples of that and you're much more likely to get feedback. But generally, if you just keep to the one mic track, keep your level sane, everything should be okay. And that setting will automate the process for you. For the key crucial part of this though, we need to make some settings changes in Zoom. Now, this is something that I haven't found in Microsoft Teams, for instance, which I need to use in one place. And this is the key to this working with reasonably high quality audio. So let's look at Zoom and see how you make those changes. So here you can see we are in the Zoom app settings. So this is important that you do this in the Zoom app, not in the web version. So you need the app to do this. And then you go to audio, and there's two settings that are of concern. So the first thing is your microphone setting. So in this case, you can see here, I've got the Behringer UMC 404 HD. So this is my, in quotes, Zoom sound card. So this is the second sound card. You can just see, here's a picture of it just in my studio. So you can see the two cables going into the front of it. And that's all it's used for in this context. So I've picked that. Previously, this would have probably been on my microphone for my webcam. Uh, you can see some other virtual things and so on here, but that's the one we're using and you can see that audio is getting through. But the most important thing is advanced. Advanced. So we click on advanced and this is the key to the whole thing working. So you need to tick show in meeting option to enable original sound. If that isn't ticked, um, then this isn't going to work. Now, I'm not sure whether there's a switch to turn that on. Certainly, I've, I've found that that appears in my Mac and my PC versions. So both of those uh, work fine. But if that isn't in there, maybe look on Zoom how you enable that. But I, th I think there used to be uh, an option that you had to set to turn that on, whereas now it's definitely there. But this is key. If you haven't got this, this isn't going to work, as you'll see later on in this video. But once you've got that, you can just click back, close this window, and then set up your meeting as normal and invite people, and then you should be in business. So here we can see we're in the Zoom meeting. So we've got one of me there, one of me there, and one of me there. So there's three of me, which obviously is probably two too many, if not maybe three. Anyway, 
the key thing here is to make sure that you have original sound turned on. Now, I've set mine to be default, so you've got this little option here where you can select a microphone to always use original sound, which I've got here. So at the moment, this is monitoring through Cubase. So Cubase is sending my mic signal through there to audio, and we're going to need to record this. So to record this, you may or may not know, you need to get permission from the meeting host. And to do that, you can go to participants here and then you can click more on your participants and say allow record and that will let them record. So you can see that's popped up on the Mac screen now and I'm just going to record this. And then we're going to pop back to Cubase. So a couple of things. So in Zoom, it's possible to share your screen. And in fact, I'm going to do that. So we see the effect there. So I'm just going to share my screen here, my entire screen to the Mac. So now the Mac is going to get that. And you can see Cubase in all its glory. And we can see the mic is still being relayed because we are in monitor mode. And if I play this track back, we're now going to play this. So it will be in there. Now, if I turn off original sound, just gonna change that setting there. So now without original sound turned on, we can do the same thing again. So now we've got that, we're gonna export that recording from Zoom and then import it into Cubase and see what it looks like, and most importantly, listen to what it sounds like. So now we're going to import that video file into Cubase. Pretty straightforward. So just go to File, Import, and Video File. And then there's that file. And we can see it's, it's put the audio on the wrong track, but that's fine. But most importantly, you can see that it is mono audio track yeah so this is really important now the levels are a bit low because i was a little conservative on my levels coming out of zoom but with a bit of practice you'll be able to get that on so let's just put that on now we're going to listen to these two here so we just listen to the audio and you can see Cubase in all its glory and we can see the mic is still and let's listen to the music so here's the music now being there we can hear that 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 sounds okay obviously it's in mono and you'd need to be aware of any issues that that may create for your mix but if we play that back And look at the waveform, look at the curve there, and then compare that with the original. So yeah, there's there's been some losses. You can see there's some loss really high up, but it's it's much better than I expected it to be for sure. I expected it to be terrible. However, let's go back to what happens when you don't turn on original sound. So there you can see what happens with uh, original sound being turned off. So we get just a tiny bit of the music. It kind of analyzes it and then says, nope, you're not having any more of that. So your voice would be heard over that had I been in a position to speak. But as you know, because of the way this was set up in terms of monitoring, we couldn't do. So that's the key takeaway for me. With the right settings in Zoom, with a cable or the right settings in your audio interface mixer, you'll be able to use Zoom and Cubase together to work collaboratively with anyone from anywhere around the world, providing they have an internet connection. That's pretty powerful. Now, as we've seen, the audio quality is good, but it's not perfect and it's in mono. So if you need stereo, 
if you need higher quality audio, then you'll need to look at a separate solution such as Audio Movers Listen To, but that's not without some downsides. It has cost implications, doesn't always work, and it's more complicated than this all-in-one setup where a client just needs to connect to a Zoom call and they're in business. As ever, if you found this useful, please consider liking and subscribing, and we'll see you again soon for more Music Tech Tuition.